Okay, thanks. Uh, I'm Paul Holm. I'm the research manager at the City Council. Uh, so my team is responsible for helping the organisation and its partners understand how we might go about doing reform projects. So how might we get the best out of our services? How might we best design those services to meet the needs of our residents? So in a nutshell, that's the sort of space that we're working in. Very complex area that includes lots about data, lots about engagement, lots about analytics and research and, and understanding. Um, I've got a ton of slides that illustrate some of the things that we do because I thought that was the best thing to do to say actually these are the types of things that we produce. We don't do it in the best way um, and actually how could we make those things more efficient, how could we use technology and new ways of thinking to drive that type of work in a, in a, in a different direction. Um, so uh, where do we use sort of data and insight? Um, uh, and when I say data and insight, it's not just pure data and databases, it's a whole array of insight that we, we capture. We use it in four main areas, the first being sort of supporting system design. So how do we design our systems, our services, our networks, the way that we work? How do we design those using evidence-led uh, sort of ways and, uh, and, and using insight and intelligence in that way? The second area is a level down, so actually once you get to individual services, how do we use insight, evidence, technology, data to actually deliver and direct our services to the right people at the right time in the right way. The third area then is a level down again, actually how do we empower our individual frontline workers, whether they be social workers, school cross, uh, crossing patrols or anything else in, in between, admin collections, whatever it might be, how do we empower those workers to have access to that insight and intelligence to, to direct the things that they do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and then finally, using all of that to be more transparent and accountable. So, you know, we're not doing any of this behind closed doors so that we only know the things that we know. This is very much about saying, well, actually, we have listened differently. We understand the reality. We understand the landscape. We're responding in a positive way to try and sort of deliver on those issues. Um, we've got a few sort of core documents that we work around in terms of our framework. They're a bit clunky in a sense, but we've got data uh, supported by our sort of information strategy. So we know that we've got data quality issues. Uh, the data that we capture at the front line is for a specific purpose. It's not always lends itself to complex analytics at the other end because it's captured for a different purpose. But we've got an information strategy that is trying to design where we want to be in that space. We've got tools, we've got an ICT strategy, you know, where do we want to be with our big software uh, procurements and other things. Um, that's very much about stabilization at the moment. It's not very much in that space of sort of developing new technologies and, and new ways of working. It's very much about giving us a stable platform that means that we can deliver services on a regular basis. Um, we've got the Our People strategy, which is about developing our workforce. So part of that for me is about uh, empowering our workforce to use data, intelligence, insight, and all the things that wrap around it in a, in a more proactive way. I think we teach people how to do public service delivery. We don't necessarily teach them how to use evidence and insight. Um, and then we've got sort of ways of working more broadly. So we've got our corporate strategy. Uh, and as Adrian said, we've got the Our Manchester strategy, which is about the whole organisation trying to operate in a different way, moving away from just providing the things that we think are right to providing services to people that they need, that they want, that they recognise and working in a very different way. So lots of things going on in terms of how we want to reshape as an organisation. Um, we produce a number of documents. All of these are available on our website. It gives an insight into the types of things that we use uh, to, to generate insight and evidence. We've got things like the State of the City Report, which is an annual document that tells us how the city is performing. Lots of KPIs, fairly traditional in one sense, um, uh, but, but we do that. We do lots of stuff around population mon monitoring and modelling and trying to understand how our resident population is changing over time. Uh, and we do stuff around engagement and profiling to try and understand uh, what it is that our residents want. Um, as I say, they're just documents that we produce at the minute. In terms of some of the illustrations and other types of things we do, as I say, this is not me saying we're changing the world. This is very much to say these are the types of things that we do and actually trying to give, uh, give you guys an insight into the things that you, you might be able to support. So we do a lot of work around reform. Uh, so reforming public services. This illustrates a couple of illustrations here. Uh, there was a complex families programme that operated nationally. What's called the Trouble Families programme, if people know it. 
love or hate the brand. Um, what we recognise, though, is that what that programme was designed to do was work in this tiny little spot in the centre. Uh, 4,000 families that were going to get tagged to support, but actually when you overlay lots of other data points, you start to see it's a tiny fraction of the whole population. So actually, we, we need to do something in that space, but it's not going to deal with all of, uh, all of the needs within the family, uh, sorry, within the city. Similarly, on health and social care, huge reform programme across the whole of the country, specifically within Greater Manchester and in Manchester. Um, seven out of ten, technically, uh, seven out of ten residents are technically in good health. They don't put huge demands on health services. They use universal support in an appropriate way. But those two in ten uh, that uh, um, uh, do need support, um, uh, obviously do. And that one in ten in high demand put a huge demand on the system. So actually, we know that we need to find new ways of working for those three in ten, and that's where our reform programmes are. But we also need to recognise that there is a whole population out there that just access our universal services. So that's about sort of understanding not just reform, but the whole population. Um, we do some maps. Um, basically, our mapping is we take data and we put it on maps. It's not more scientific than that. But we have started to compare things and start to draw out additional insight from doing that. So on the uh, right hand side, um, on my right hand side, um, uh, we could map where there is high turnover in council tax payers, so transient areas where the population is constantly moving. In our traditional sense, that's a good thing. Uh, you know, young, professional, uh, graduate population moving around, and it's very good for our economy and the way that the city works. If you couple that with complex lifestyles and those that have got lots of need, it quite quickly becomes a very damaging thing. If you are in crisis and you live in a community that is constantly moving, you've got no localised support. So bringing that data together in a fairly simple way starts to give us additional insight uh, into our communities and, and our reform priorities. Um, we classify people, and this is moving into sort of the citizen engagement bit, but we use things off the shelf. So we're using Mosaic here, simply just jotting down uh, from, from, from Mosaic type classifications, what are the different types of communities, what are the different types of residents? How might we then tailor our communication and our responses to those residents in different ways? Uh, we use that. It's a fairly blunt instrument in one way, uh, but a useful one uh, that, that, that we use at the moment. Um, where we are in terms of our programmes, traditionally we may have offered programmes that align to our administrative boundaries, so our ward boundaries are there for election purposes. We generally align our services to those because they're nice and neat and work for us. But increasingly we're starting to see things like this that actually our new ways of working are, well we know that there's something that needs to happen there, but it's not a specific boundary that we're working within. It's a radius, it's an area, it's a place that needs something different. So our whole approach is changing and we need to think about places less as boundaries on a map and places of about things that are going on uh, within those places, common things. Um, the other thing that we do, uh, often we talk a lot about integration. Um, you can't really see this, I will explain it. Um, but we talk about integration, uh, but what that can mean is that we just bring services together. In this illustration, this was an analysis we did around domestic abuse, uh, domestic violence. Um, the red blobs represent where different organisations have got a high D uh, flag within their system. So this is not asking them to do anything different. This is just saying, if you look at your data, where do you think the highest need is around domestic abuse? Some places uh, we have a consistent set, so red line across, everybody agrees that's a high priority area. Other places, lots of discrepancies. So when we look at our children's services record, we may be focusing our attention in one place. When you talk to Greater Manchester Police, they may be focusing it in another. It's not to say any of us are wrong, we are doing what we're supposed to be doing, but actually bringing that data together gives us a very different perception and sort of describing this as the same challenge but through different lenses uh, at the moment. Um, we do a lot of evaluation, so actually trying to understand how things change over time. Uh, this was some work we did around the Troubled Families Programme, the National Programme. Uh, what we started to see, well actually, before we started to work differently with families, we had the blue bars. So on this illustration, 55% of families had uh, at least one child who was missing school on a regular basis, uh, so poor attendance at school. 
after the support of the new ways of working, that had dropped down to 9%. So we've not solved it for every family, but we've made a massive increase, a uh, massive decrease in, uh, in, in, in that metric. On other metrics, it's very different. So on the police call outs, we've made a sizable reduction in that difference between the blue and orange bars, but there's still quite a lot of demand placed on the police, and we need to be clear that actually we've not resolved that for everybody. Um, and then we sort of try and bring all that together. Um, so you definitely can't see this slide. <laughs> um, but what this is trying to say is that we're doing lots of things around lots of projects. So we may be doing stuff around health and social care. We may be doing stuff around school readiness. We may be doing something about our places. We're not very good at bringing those things together then. We do very bespoke individual pieces about a problem or a thematic area. What I'd love to do is find solutions that we can start to connect these things together. So we're not just talking about people and reform, we are talking about people in places who look like this and operate like that and, and, and those various connections. So um, in terms of our opportunities, we've been trying to describe our problem areas under sort of four main brackets. The first, first one is sort of understanding complex pathways. So looking at any situation at one point in time, there are many variables that are affecting that. The examples we've got in there are things like social work, health and social care, worklessness. When you look at the factors that affect um, somebody who might be workless, they are many. It isn't just a PWP or an employment job centre plus type characteristic. There are lots of things that are going on there. There are lots of data points that we hold to public services. There are lots of data points and insight pieces that are out there uh, that we have no connection to. Um, we need some solutions to try and help us efficiently work through how you bring those data points together in different ways. Second point is similar, but looking more on a longitudinal spectrum. So actually, how do you track things over a long period of time? We do it well in some areas, but in other areas we don't. So how do we understand how those children who we may be supporting to be school ready at the age of five, what are their outcomes like in much later life? How do we build the solutions that enable us to connect that data and that insight into, uh, into, into usable formats. The third area is probably most closely aligned to the call around uh, citizen engagement, but how do we understand our resident perceptions? How do we understand our places? Uh, so we've had a long history of telephone surveys, uh, sampled telephone surveys on a piece of paper very statistically valid. We've quota based, we've controlled, we've done all of the things that we need to do to say this represents our whole population. What we found is that nobody wants to pick up the phone anymore. Uh, nobody uh, wants to engage in a 15 minute telephone conversation around what they think about the places that they live. They want to use easy, connected ways uh, and, and, and tools. And um, we're not quite equipped to be able to do that at the moment. And I think there's a real opportunity in that space for us to think about how do we understand our places, our residents, our communities both the, uh, the demands in terms of what they, what they need and expect, but also the opportunities and the assets that they rely on and they connect into. Uh, so a big opportunity around that. Um, and then bringing some of, all, some of those things together, um, we, we need to better understand that connection between people and place. So once we start understanding more about those sort of maybe assets within, uh, within communities uh, and within that resident perception side, you know, how do we connect those assets to other people so that we can build on those opportunities and sort of develop new models and new ways of working? I think that's it. I'll leave it there. Um, I've got a whole annex in this pack in case people were interested in other types of data we've got, but I'll, we'll share that and take questions on that later. Okay, thanks, okay. Paul.